I would like to show you something I've been working on for some time now and think it is ready to be shared with some people. Just for some context, collecting retro computers is fun. Well, to me. Take this Commodore 128 and this PC-10-3. They are nice to look at, but I think a bigger part of the fun in having them is actually using them. So you need software for them. For this type of machine, mostly distributed on cassette tapes or floppy disks. It is important to note that you don't really need physical media for the Commodore 128 as you can type in a program into BASIC, but that takes long and is very prone to mistakes. So with collecting old computers also comes the collecting of a lot of software to utilize those amazing old beasts, which gave me the idea for something. Honestly, something that is not groundbreaking, but still I wanted to share it in this video. Because I started an archive site, and I called it the Retromels Archive. You can find it at retromelsarchive.com. It is still in a beta version, as for probably the coming months. So I just made the pages accessible. It's a very standard site with articles on how I archived and links to my other site, explainer videos and some support. I separated the software out in eras, the 70s, 80s and 90s. Also MS-DOS has its own tab, as does documentation. And I said not very groundbreaking as I'm of course aware of sites like the Internet Archive. So in my 70s era you will find a Commodore Pad page where I uploaded the contents of these tapes I got a while back from the Dutch version of eBay. Still have to fix the keyboard on this Commodore Pad. So the contents of those tapes are over at this page together with this explainer video that shows you how to load them into the Vice emulator. Also on my archive you will find a tape related to this awesome TRS-80 MC-10, a computer which form factor I can really appreciate. It is a tape with some Dutch basic programs. The tape also works with XROR, a TRS-80 emulator. That is also a goal of this site, that the software works with emulators for people to try who not necessarily collect old computers but would like to try some of the software. With most tapes I offer a player that lets you play the audio file in your browser so you don't have to download them. Although when you click the little download link in Chrome, it will also load a player. The 80s has a bit more platforms with, for instance, the MZ700 that I featured in a recent video with high speed dubbing. I really like the MZ700, although I am sometimes irritated by it because of the long loading times. You'll find some cassettes on this page that I got with my second MZ700. This includes the basic tape that I high speed dubbed to test if that would work with old computers. Really like the comments on that video. A lot of people told me how they used high speed dubbing back in the day. The MSAP tapes also have a player that allows playing the tapes in the browser. Of course files for the Commodore 64 could not not be on my archive site. I have a lot of floppies and cassette tapes for this platform, but for the time being only the floppies related to the 64 magazine are available for download. These tend to have programs that are in German, but there's a lot of them. Recently I also started archiving some of my documents. I was reluctant to do this because I expected that to be tedious, but I found some nice tools to do this. Tools I want to show with you in a future video. For instance, I archived some documents that came with my Grundy New Brain. Most of these are probably also on other sites, but again, this is mostly for my fun, but of course also to help other retro enthusiasts. Some of the New Brain documents included the Disk User Manual, Handbook and Beginner's Guide. You download them by clicking on the thumbnail. Although I have to be honest and tell you loading times on these can be long, as they are large files. I've not yet found a good way of making PDFs smaller without the resolution going down. On most of my documents I will add a watermark saying archive by me and that it's for hobby purposes, because that is the main goal in sharing files on my site. Make them available for other people who can use it for their hobby too. So for instance, there's no monetary goal involved, as there will be no ads on the site, as I hate those myself too. And heck, I'm down quite a considerate amount of money in buying all the software in my collection, and prices of physical media have steadily been going up, as, of course, the prices of the actual hardware itself. Here are some of the buy it now prices you see today. Of course, these are not as indicative of current prices, as there are still good deals out there. Also, hosting a website understandably is not free, and try to share software that the companies behind won't mind me sharing for hobby purposes. So for instance, I won't be sharing my copy of Petsky Robots or Planet X3, but in case I upload something that people rather see being taken down because maybe they own it or something, there's a request removal form to make sure we can fix that. 
But again, the mission of my philanthropical undertaking called Retromel's Archive is to provide fun to other retro enthusiasts, and also the clock is ticking to digitize this software, as physical media has a shelf life slash sell by date that has on most tapes and floppies already come and gone, making buying old physical media, as long as you don't use it to make bags or key hangers, a risky investment. But might there come a lot of backlash for uploading files to the internet? I could always pull the plug and just have them on my own server. That being said, the page currently with the most software is the MS-DOS 5.25 inch section. I had a lot of trouble figuring out how to archive these discs, as I'm a very big retro amateur but managed to get quite some discs archived already, but still a lot to go. I'll make a video on my archiving process soon, hopefully. Also, I played around with how I wanted to organize my software a lot, as I'm not only a retro amateur, but also an internet design amateur. I found this list system working the best in making it somewhat overseeable and available in alphabetical order. I first wanted to go with a layout similar to my pages with cassette tapes, but that proved to be tedious. Talking about being an amateur, this is also an amateur archive, mainly meant for people to peruse around and just try out some titles. Always with the risk of encountering load errors or some interestingly corrupted software, which I sometimes share just for people to maybe if they want to take apart. The MS-DOS discs work in DOSBox, as I have an explainer video explaining how to load them into the Mac version of that program. Using the images to write to blank floppies, I've not yet tried, with the emphasis on yet. I wanted to make sure people understand how my files can be loaded, as sometimes I use a not-so-standard, some would say, amateur way of digitizing my software. So on the various platform pages you will find explainer videos showcasing how to do this in a minute or two. These are also put together on one page. These are shots of the MZ700 explainer video. Other videos on the site include the ones I digitized from some rare Apple Umatic tapes, including the video showcasing the archiving process. Okay. That is some of the stuff that is currently available on the website. Well, I doubt it, but you might be wondering what is next. Well, speaking of those type-in basic programs at the beginning of this video, well, I have some books with those programs in Dutch and English. I'm going to scan those and try to experiment with them, seeing if I can find an efficient 21st century way of loading them. Also, but this is more for Dutch retro folks, I recently got a whole bunch of these HCC, Home Computer Club magazines, from the 80s and 90s, that have some interesting articles on the various very active user groups in the Netherlands, in addition to awesome ads and what I like most, very nice reviews of old computers. And I believe some of these are not yet digitally available on the internet. So this website will in a sort of way also be dedicated to preserving old Dutch software and documentation. When you look at the homepage of my site, there is already some platforms showing that I would like to add, or are already in the process of adding. Like these IBM reference disks, which I love the IBM inus of. Of course, these are already available on a lot of other sites. There are already some MS-DOS versions on my website, like a Laser and Philips version. These mystery tapes that I think belong to a spectrum, judging that being written in between the brackets, Still have to replace the membrane of this ZX Spectrum Plus. Also, software will be added that will work with this Toshiba MSX computer. Mainly cassettes, as I yet don't own any floppy drives for the MSX computers. But I believe I do have some of those floppies laying around. Also want to back up these mini cassettes, but that has proven to be a bit tedious and has not yet worked. I want to share some of my Commodore 16 software. And of course, this won't be a retro software archive without some software for the VIC-20, a computer I love dearly. Look at the lovely label. Mainly cassettes, as I just have a handful of VIC-20 floppies. So I have a lot of cassettes for the Atari 8-bit line, and recently did a big transaction buying a bunch of tapes related to the MZ-800 and 700. Also, I managed to get some floppies for the Apple II that I want to digitize and make work with my floppy MU. By the way, these discs have proven to be very difficult to find, and when they pop up, they go for really high prices. Also got some manuals with them, so those will also be on the site. Then some files for the Color Computer 1 and 2. I got a Coco 1 with some cassette tapes that are already available on the archive now, so you can try them with your Coco or an emulator. I'll be talking about this Coco 1 and those tapes in a video soon. Really have come to love the Color Computer line, really fun computers. I want to look into making BIOS chips available on the archive, but I will have to do some research on that, 
advice is very welcome. More platforms will include the Amiga and Atari ST lines of computers. To archive all these discs and cassettes, I use a plethora of different little devices to archive my software, like this Grease Weasel, which is a very trusty floppy tool, or this 1530 to USB for data sets, and the XUM 1541 for Commodore floppies. I want to make videos showcasing how I archived and have come up with this working title for that video series. Bear with me. I still have to discuss that with my creative team as it might be a bit much for videos digitizing cassette tapes and floppy disks. But to summarize, my archive is a fun project, mainly because I enjoy the tedious process of digitizing physical media, but also to enable other people to use the software in my collection with their precious old computers. So definitely more to come on this, as I haven't talked about for instance the various TRS-80 Model 1 tapes, BBC floppies that have a lot of issues and other awesome ZX tapes. But not of course limited to that, but for now I want to thank you for watching. <laughs>